This has been one of the greatest years in gaming, but without a couple shortcomings. It's also been a weird year for gaming, a very weird year. So with the good, sometimes you gotta take the bad. I'm your host, Jay Dorena. And I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. And we're gonna be counting down the top 10 worst games of 2020. The worst ones, and although there have been the best ones, so just keep that in mind. There's a silver lining here. Coming at number 10, we have Crisis Remastered. Back in the day when the first Crisis Crisis game came out, it was such a technical powerhouse that if you had a PC that could run it on ultra settings, you were probably too rich for your own good. So when Crisis Remastered got announced, everyone thought that this was going to be a return to form, that this was going to be the new version to push modern PCs to the edge just like its predecessor. But when it was released, the game was actually kind of ugly. The lighting seemed to be rendered very poorly, character models were bland, and the physics in the game seemed extremely basic for the modern time. It wasn't so much that Crisis was a terrible game, it was just extremely mediocre. And if you're gonna remake one of the most famous games in history, then you have to bring it. Number nine, Fast and Furious Crossroads. One of the worst thing about this Fast and Furious game is that it had such promise. Great voice acting cast that even features Michelle Rodriguez, Tyrese Gibson, and Vin Diesel himself, as well as some very talented and acclaimed fresh talent when it comes to the franchise, including Sonequa Martin Green, whom I love, and yet despite all the crazy things you can accomplish while driving your car, a callback to outlandish stunts that we've seen in the films, the amazing cars and vehicles featured in this game, and the great voice acting, this game still managed to fail on pretty much every level. Because the driving, mission objectives, and camera angles are just so erratic, confusing, and bizarre, making the game beyond frustrating to play. Despite this game being a promising one on many different levels, Ultimately, the game fails when it comes to, well, the basic execution of exactly why you bought it, to drive. So yeah, if you can't drive in a Fast and Furious game, what's happening? Those ah! must be those famous <laughs> driving skills you That's told random. me about, eh? <laughs> if I ever need a getaway driver, you've got the job. You'd better have a good explanation for all this. Coming in number eight, we have One Punch Man, a hero nobody knows. For fans of One Punch Man, you know that the anime and the comics sent around a cast of interesting and unique characters with Saitama, also known as One Punch Man, at the center of all of it. Well, this game strips away any sort of personality and brings in some of the most generic fighting gameplay you can imagine. You don't even get to play as Saitama, and I understand that it's hard to make a game where the main character is a guy who can beat anyone without even putting in a little bit of effort. That's partly why there's never been a good Superman game, but then why did you make the game? There are more interesting ways you could have used this IP than a standard 3D fighter, but they went down the most generic route from one of the best manga slash animes of all time. And when you're exploring the world through the single player game, it somehow gets more dry with all of the main missions being fetch quests and everyone you meet as dry as plain toast that was left out in the sun. Number seven, Cyberpunk 2077 for PS4 and Xbox One. It's important to specify when talking about Cyberpunk 2077 that we are talking about the older generation console version of this game. Because for PC, this massive game has been a slam dunk. And I know Che himself will be very sad if I said anything other than that, because I know he's really loving it on his PC. So yes, we are talking about PS4 and Xbox One here. But mainly, in my opinion, PlayStation, where it has been reported the game is actually breaking older consoles. You know a game is bad if it's breaking your console. The glitches, crashes, and problems created so much outrage and so many complaints that PlayStation and CD Projekt Red ended up pulling the game from the PlayStation Store and PlayStation began to offer refunds for anyone that had bought it. The problem is that the game is just so great and so high quality that older gen consoles cannot handle it. And it hasn't really been um, created to be ported properly onto those consoles yet, who are operating at much lower settings than a gaming PC. IGN recently re-reviewed the game just for Xbox One and PS4 because this was such an issue and gave it a 4 out of 10, urging people to not buy it for those consoles, saying that by comparison, it's a completely different gaming experience than for PC. Coming in number 6, we have Elder Scrolls Blades. It seems like ever since Fallout 76 that Bethesda has had a smudge on their reputation. And if they were looking to wipe away that smudge with Elder Scrolls Blades, then this was not the way to do it. You know how Elder 
Scrolls is all about exploring a massive world with characters that are uniquely yours, and you can spend hours on little side quests about dudes who are stuck in paintings. Well, this game has none of that. Elder Scrolls Blades has tried to pack the experience down into a phone by forcing you through a couple of game modes that are basically just you gliding through dungeons as you kill the same enemies over and over again, and then get loot that requires microtransactions to unlock. Man, slapping a freemium model on Elder Scrolls is a surefire way to lose all of the joy. Some of the chesting games that are non-optional for progression will force you to wait six hours to open or cough up cash if you want to open them right away. If you're going to take a beloved franchise and turn it into a money-begging monster, at least make it good. Number 5. Puzzle and Dragon's Gold when we talk about Puzzle and Dragons, we're talking about a game that has a successful franchise and past behind it, especially in the realm of mobile games. This year, we saw a version of Puzzle and Dragons released to Nintendo Switch. Now, many fans were expecting another Smash after their previous and successful game release on Nintendo 3DS. The biggest gripe fans had is that this game isn't very welcoming to players who are new to the world and also doesn't offer a lot of free roam or interesting, you know, actual RPG mechanics for players to enjoy despite this being a combo puzzle and RPG style game. The game basically takes you through a very specific series of battles interwoven with cutscenes that don't really make any sense unless you're familiar with the anime that was created for the franchise. So basically, useless. Coming in number 4, we have Remothered Broken Porcelain. Indie horror games are all the rage for a group of people who love indie horror. Remothered Broken Porcelain was looking to be a fun stealth survival horror just like its predecessor, Remothered Broken Fathers. But sometimes people drop the ball and you're left with a hunking mess that is full of glitches, a confusing story, and just bad game design. Remothered takes place in a creepy hotel a la The Shining, and inside it are several deranged guests who will try to murder you. And while they are legitimately creepy, fighting them is the real terror. It's common to have boss fights where there are crucial objects you need to fight the boss, just vanish from the world. If you get spotted by one of these psychos, your only option is to run and hide, which has been a lasting trope in the survival horror genre. But in this game, sometimes you'll try to open a locker to hide in, and the button prompts just don't show up. And even when they do, sometimes they don't work. So your attack will burst into the room and find you at no fault of your own. Also, the story is all over the place, constantly flying back backwards and forwards in time, leaving the player confused and completely uninvested in what's going on. Also, a lot of the puzzle solving that made the first game good has been taken away, and your character moves so slow that you'll be trying to sneak up on an enemy for a sneak attack and they'll turn around and see you because it just took too long to get to them, which is maybe the most frustrating thing that can happen to you in a stealth game. Ah yes, the pinnacle of gaming. The pinnacle of gaming. Number 3, Bounty Battle. What looked like a promising Smash Bros inspired title but makes an actual indie game worlds based on sci-fi magic and fantasy ended up being a lackluster one note game with poor graphics and confusing combat mechanics. Which is unfortunate because honestly a game with a bunch of like indie game characters battling off seems really cool. Bounty Battle had an ambitious release coming out on all three major consoles and on PC and performing almost as poorly on all of them. Though many considered the Switch gameplay to to be the worst of the lot. The fighting animations don't even seem to make sense in this game. It's like your characters are just overlaid on top of one another. It's unfortunate because the art and overall idea of the game just seems really promising. And the characters' appearances, when they aren't animated, initially draw you in and make you want to play, only to leave you disappointed once you do. Coming in at number two, we have Warcraft 3 Reforged. Man, Blizzard used to be one of the greatest developers in the world, but now they can't stop falling on their own face. Whether it's the Blitz Chung debacle or making the worst versions of classic games, these guys keep slipping up. Warcraft Reforged came out to an avalanche of hate from people who adored the original version. Changes were made to the game that made zero sense and actually made the game harder to play. Warcraft has always been famous for user-generated content and the systems to implement 
meant these things were pretty much broken. And on top of this, it was just full of glitches. And when you're playing on RTS, you want things to run smoothly or you're going to be ripping out your own hair and screaming at the screen. This is the kind of game that will send you into a rage if you don't lose by your own accord. The craziest thing about this is that Warcraft 3 is a 13 year old game. All you had to do was put a fresh coat of paint on it and maybe a couple of other features and then it was a win. How did you bungle this this hard? Number one, Outbreak the New Nightmare. While entertaining to play if you want to enjoy a game that takes you back to original Resident Evil without actually having the IP, and takes you even further back to a time when walking animations made it look like your character was still learning how to walk, then look no further than Outbreak the New Nightmare. The true nightmare is the low, low frame rate that you'll experience when trying to sprint or switch between menus, and the fixed and oddly placed camera angles which make it sometimes almost impossible to see what's really happening on screen or what you're doing. Outbreak the New Nightmare is basically a ripoff of original Resident Evil. It's like someone wanted to remake that game but without any actual improvements or even any of the lore or story elements that made that game great. And without actually, you know, getting permission to make Resident Evil. So you just get a modern day game that looks like it's trapped in the early 2000s. Kind of one needs. <laughs> These songs look so <laughs> Sorry, I almost shot you in the face. Oh, it's this okay. Is wow, some of these games just had so much promise but did not deliver. They just dropped the ball when it came to the actual execution of mechanics, gameplay, or animation, or all three. So unfortunate. But we've also seen some pretty great games this year as well, so I guess we just can't have it all be good. Let us know if you have played any of these titles in the comments below. And what new games you are most excited for this year. This has been Top 10 Gaming, and I'm Amanda McKnight. I'm Jay Dorena. Till next time, keep on gaming on. Pew pew!